Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you to be from beautiful Waikiki Beach. Uh, my wife always likes for me to start the show off with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. Meka inoa o kamakua kekeki a meke o hanahemalele. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to remind everybody my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? Just is just coming out now and uh, is available for you. We, we uh, it's a great book for you, mama bears, to get for the men in your life. And men, I can't think of a better book for you to read in your small men's groups or to, or better yet, to read, read with your sons. We want to remind you, you can go get it at Amazon.com. You can go to our website, DeepAdventure.com. You can probably pick it up at all the Barnes and Nobles and Books a Million stores and things like that too. Uh, but we're so stoked today because we have a cowboy here with us. We've got a. Uh, a friend of mine here from Waikiki Beach, uh, Eddie Barenke, is with us. Hello, Eddie. Aloha. Aloha, Bear. How are you? Good. We're so glad to have Eddie with us. It's interesting. Um, uh, in the last three years, I've gone through, uh, people don't know this, but it's amazing, producing the reality TV show Long Ride Home, uh, the motorcycle show, and producing this radio show and offering a book and speaking and, and working, of course, to support my family. Um, it's been uh, it's been an interesting ride because I went through a period of time <clears throat> fighting cancer. I, I had cancer. I went through radiation, uh, and it and that 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 challenge resulted in me getting multiple infections and then tearing a couple muscles loose <laughs> that had to be reattached. It was gnarly, and I, don't, I didn't really share that with anybody. Um, but the, but I'm on the other side of all that, and I'm cancer free. And I basically I went to doctors' offices. Or physical therapy offices. I probably went about 225 times in a, in a three-year period of time. So, it was challenging. It was it was very interesting because it was in a season in my life when so much fruit was coming forth, and it's almost like I needed to. Having gone through that, and the Lord standing by by me with that. There's a scripture for that scripture verse that says, "When I am weak, then I am strong," and uh, and the Lord really uh, really was there with me through all of that. Uh, one of my children went through a, a huge uh, challenging cancer situation with uh, colon cancer surgery that had to be done and then chemotherapy and then all the complications that went with that. And it's just kind of interesting how uh, people can respond to that type of adversity in different ways. And that's why we called my show The Bear Wozniak Adventure because we're all on an adventure. And m usually when you think of an adventure, uh, you think about all kinds of things going wrong. You know, when we rode our motorcycles across the, the, the country in our TV show, Long Ride Home, um, we, the goal was then we knew there would be adversity, and that was, the best, that was the best of the shows. I remember when the very first day we filmed, there was a hurricane. I told the network, we got to go, there's a hurricane coming. And they're going, oh, you got to go park your cars and hide everything? No, we're going to go ride into the hurricane. I mean, you know, we're going to go out there and face that adversity. This was... I think down back in 2016. Uh, so it's it's in the it's changing the adversity into adventure, and you do that by one thing: turning your face to God and saying to the Lord, "Not my will, but Your will be done." And then just and then just saying, "By Your grace alone." That's what that's the essence of what a cowboy is. In the book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? It's basically grit and grace. And so we have a friend of mine here, Eddie Barenke, who's very well known here in the Catholic community, uh, very involved in men's ministry and other things. He went through just a gnarly, gnarly uh, situation in the last year, uh, also fighting cancer. Um, uh, and he, he actually has a video that he did that's called uh, My Summer in Houston. He actually had to go to the mainland to be taken care of. So we want to welcome uh, my heroic friend, Eddie Branke. Thank you for being with us, Eddie. Sure, sure thing. Thank you for having me. It's so cool to have uh, to be here in Hawaii and having a Hawaiian friend on my show. So, Eddie, before we talk about this 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 uh, this adventure, this adversity that you went through, and your whole family and all those that love you went through it too, 
Uh, that's one thing we need to do is give a shout out to the caregivers in our lives. Uh, Definitely, but yes. but we want to know you first. Tell us a little bit about you and your your you know your walk with the Lord and and give give us the the backstory. You know, I cradle Catholic. I was an altar boy growing up. Got involved in the church, and then I remember one year saying that something's missing. Something's missing. So I just I prayed and. And I just basically asked God to lead me where you need uh, me to go. And that's scary sometimes because you don't know, you know, it's his will. It's the most dangerous, it's the most, my... it's the most dangerous <clears throat> prayer you can pray is thy will be done. But it's, it's the right. best prayer you can pray. Yeah. So he led me to my wife who I met in the Philippines. And I was somebody here. I, I'm telling you that I cradle Catholic, altar boy, and I went to church on Sundays. But that was it. And then he led me to my my wife in the Philippines, and she would go every day. And I would ask her, "Why are you going to church every day?" You know, and I didn't get it. But then after we were married, then she actually drew me closer to God, and so that was an she was literally an answer to my prayer. And then then after that, then I was I remember being asked questions by a non Catholic, and I couldn't answer the questions, and I was. I was speechless. I didn't know what to to say, and I just felt that that was the Lord saying, "Well, you need to dive more deeply into your faith." And so I learned more about the faith. And I remember in my confession telling the priest, "I don't know how to defend my faith," you know. And so I felt that it was it was a sin, and and then I just led me to other things, and it felt like God was saying, "Eddie, thank you. Now you're ready. Here's where I want you to go. Here's where I want you to go." And things just things just started changing in my life. For example, tell us, tell us what you mean. What do you mean by that? Things started changing. It was I became more prayerful. I I didn't pray the rosary on a regular basis. Now we pray it every night. And and on top of that, there was one time where I don't know if you remember, but the the statue, our Our Lady of Fatima statue, came here. It was this worldwide tour and was here. And and the Latin community prayed. There were different groups that had to pray. A decade of the rosary and then the latin community at that time they prayed uh, one of the decades and they prayed in latin and then I, it was so beautiful i turned my wife i said we need to learn how to do that and so mm-hmm. fast forward we pray the rosary all my kids and my wife we pray the rosary in latin every day well you will you, will you say the hail mary in latin i love I, I we were talking about this so I, I i can't do it by memory but i i like to pray along with john paul too on one of those apps uh in, will you sure. pray will you pray the hail mary just in latin for us for a moment i just sure. it's just so beautiful ave maria gratia plena dominis tecum benedicta tu mariaribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui sus sancta maria mater dei ora pro nobis peccatoribus nunc et in hora mortis nostre amen isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. And I had you said you, you listened to John Paul too. When I was trying to learn the Latin Rosary, I did listen to some of his video and audio on YouTube, and I was kind of trying to emulate him. I find my found myself trying to emulate him. He had a certain voice. You do, Eddie. I mean, you do. Awful. You you've got because his his voice when he's praying the Rosary is so manly, and you and you and, and as you're praying that, it just comes out. With that warrior spirit, you know, for me when I pray the rosary, um, uh, I'm I'm growing in that whole arena. But for me, my first coming to pray the rosary was in intercessory prayer. So, like mm-hmm. I, I was picking up a weapon, as Padre Pio says, and it, and there's no effect of what more. It's just so effective when you when I pray the rosary and asking Mary to intercede intercede uh, on, on on my behalf or uh, what I'm praying for or the people I'm praying for. I should say. It's just so powerful, and so it's it's it right to have a manly voice when you're you're praying the rosary. Um, so so you begin. Yeah, I didn't so go- think of it as a manly voice. I just like the way his voice sounded. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to emulate that voice. And then so when we when I prayed it, like so our first Fridays uh, over at the cathedral, I prayed in Latin, and and the the acoustics in the cathedral, the Cathedral of Our Lady of Peace. Is is just awesome, and it's not like I, I'm saying, oh, "Wow, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna sound great," but it just sounds, I don't know, holy. I guess <laughs> more holy. Yeah, it it it, it the, the the rosary is is a real mystery, and the whole the whole um, 
fact that uh, we can int- we can ask Mary to intercede for us is is exactly. such a mystery, and yet and yet that's what we see in the Gospels when the when when they ran out of the wa- the wine, uh, they didn't go to Jesus; they went to Mary. And Mary then went to Jesus. And it was so interesting because he said, Mother, you know it's not my time yet. And yet then he realized, oh, it is my time. My mother is asking me to do this. It is time for me to right. do this. Now, Jesus was fully God and fully man, but it was actually that inspiration from Mary where he moved into the first miracles and began to really start his public ministry. And so and so for us, it's 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 uh, we have... Um, we, Jesus was formed in in Mary's womb. Jesus was formed in Mary, and, right. we and pretty, I just we, learned. Well, well, here's a, here's a mystery. I want to I want to do this. We'll come back. Is that sure. in a mysterious way we are actually members of Christ's body? In a very right. mysterious way, therefore, we are also formed in this cosmic sense of eternity and infinity. We are actually formed in her womb as well. And not just in her womb, but in her heart. I agree. And so we we are, we're being formed physically because we're in that 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 uh, resurrected body and uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, and spiritually. So uh, Mary has it, it's a very much a mystery for us. Um, but to have that understanding that that we are also being formed in in her as Jesus was formed in her. We'll be right back with our guest Ed, Eddie Barenke. We're going to get into some really gritty some gritty conversation about adversity and adventure. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community and our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm just going to keep reminding you guys. Oh, man. Well, during this season in my life, we're talking about adversity. During the season in my life when I was going through cancer treatment, the last three years, 220 I think it's more than that. V- visits to hospitals, doctors, physical therapists, because I, I had cancer, I had radiation, I had three infections that tried to take my life, and I also had uh, two muscles tore loose, part- partially because of the cancer treatment. And uh, and in the midst of all that, I wrote this book, Where Have All the Cows, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And it's rough. It was really tough because I did it in fits and starts because I, w- I was out a lot my life was constantly being interrupted and so I see this this book as 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 a something that came out of adversity and it's for 
people to read, to learn, uh, to, to, to give people uh, fortitude and to give men courage. Women, buy this book for your men and women. You, you will love this book. Read this book for yourself, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? My guest is Eddie Barranque. He's We're going to talk about some adversity that he faced in his life. But, Eddie, I want to go this direction. There's a word in Hawaiian, and I think everyone, just the sound of it is so powerful. And the word is imua, imua. And it means mm-hmm. it means coraggio, the virtue of fortitude. But it's more than just courage. It's courage that moves forward. You can almost hear it when you hear the men say that imua here. You hear that. You hear that in their voice. Uh, strength and courage and fortitude, not just to make a stand, but to move forward. Now we had something to happen here in the islands, devastating in Lahaina, and we see shirts now. People are wearing wearing imua Maui. You know, move forward Maui. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, in Lahaina, this fire just swept through. And we have no idea yet how many souls we've lost. Uh, uh, and, and my dad was a Catholic deacon in Lahaina. He, uh, he, his, his church was Maria Lanaquila Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. M- many of you may know it. Yeah, um, uh, Eddie, do you want to tell us about that church in Lahaina? What? Well, from what I've seen on social media, was that despite the destruction that was going on in Lahaina, Maria Lanaquila was was basically untouched. And so, you know, a lot of people think it's a miracle and and I've just seen pictures and videos of it. And it's like wow. And and then then there's a particular person who was recording the video and he pans around and yes, there's devastation. There's and nothing. Pans back to the left. Even even the there's school. Nothing. The school is burned down, the church school but right. but the but the, the church itself where the present of Jesus in the, in the Eucharist is always present in a Catholic church. Maybe you don't know this if you're not Catholic, but if you ever go to a Catholic church, no matter where you are, if you go to Greece, you go to uh, Bosnia, you go to Japan, you go to Australia, wherever you go in the world, if you go into a Catholic church, there's usually a, a, you'll see a candle, a red, a red, uh, a candle that's glowing red, and right next to that will be the will be where the sacrament is. The body, blood, soul, and divinity are always there in a Catholic church. And and so uh, and so that church stood. And if you think about it, people will keep will be saying, "Oh, well, that church is a real symbol of hope." No, it's not. It's within that church is hope itself. It's Jesus right. Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So, so now in your in your life, uh, uh, you you went through this this battle. I, I'd like to just leap forward to that, the imu, imua that you and your family had to go through. Tell us about when suddenly this cancer struck and, and, and the battle that that ensued. You know, there was one time this was so this was I recall in December of 2021. I just I picked up my wife from work and then as soon as we got home, I felt a sharp pain in my left side. And I was like, oh, man, and, and it wouldn't go away. And it initially felt like a cramp. And then I was thinking you know, as guys, like, oh no, that means I have to go to the doctor. And But I was thinking, what is this? And then I was trying to rationalize and say, okay, if it goes away, then I'll be fine. I, sh- I should be good. But then later it came back again that night. It was just a stabbing pain. And and I honestly let it go. And, and then it was the months progressed. And then now we're in March and I've got my business right March business. March, of, March of 2022 March of 2022 So COVID's yes. just hitting and, as I recall right that or is COVID in 2021 I forget Yes uh, no, no yeah so COVID was earlier I, I think it was uh, 2020 and Okay okay but um but so 2022 we're already in March at the beginning of the year in 2022 and oh, yeah. I was getting fevers from time to time my legs were swelling and my wife's an RN and so she's saying Eddie you need to go get it checked and I go yeah 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 I'll get it checked and I don't know if that's just a guy thing and uh and I said yeah I'm, I'm so busy with work and everything well, let, and then we just- let me say this to the men out there you 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 if, if you men if you're feeling symptoms don't be a coward be a cowboy go right, in there right. and get it checked because the sooner and you I deal with it yeah, it's it's it's. I, I mean, no, you had work to do, but actually, there's this part of you who goes, "I don't want to face the music right now. I don't know what it is." Right, but right, man, exactly. listen then, to what Eddie, Eddie's saying. If you've got an issue, you go get that checked out. 
Right, right. And, and, and I was, and, and remember, we're talking about December. And then now finally, when I get checked, it's April now. I have legs swelling. I didn't want to go to work. And I'm passionate about, I'm a t-shirt printer. So I'm very passionate about my business, but my legs are swelling. I was running fevers. I didn't feel like going to work. And then my wife said, you know what? Oh, and, and this is a blessing, must be a blessing from God because the building where our studio was, was going to be torn down and we had to move out. And so by the end of April, we had to move out. And so my wife said, well, this is a good time for you to go get checked. And so after a work day, I went to a, an urgent care place and they walked me around the place and said, your heart rate is high. And then they said, you need to go to the ER. I'm like, oh man, not the ER. And is that, I is said, that the, can is I that do the, it tomorrow? Is that the place right here in Waikiki where you went? No, it, it was actually, there's an urgent care on ward. So in the ward in the Kakako yeah, area, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Uh, a new place. And so we went into the urgent care and they said, you need to go to ER. And they said, you need to go today. And this was evening time already, so I went to the ER. I, in fact, I parked on the curb because I figured, you know, they'll go in, they'll check me, and then we'll figure out that they'll run tests, and then we'll do something in the future. So then I get there, my first time in the ER, they hook me up and everything, taking samples, checking me here and there. And then they said, next thing I knew, they said, we're admitting you. I look at my wife and said, they're admitting me. I'm like, and, and the thing was, I knew that something was wrong. I knew, but they said, we're admitting you. And so I had to actually, actually call uh, one of our friends, one of our, I had to call Ron and I said, you know, cause my wife doesn't drive. I said, Ron, can you come by and, and at least pull my car into the garage? And then, but fast forward, they were running a, a plethora of tests for three days. So I was in the hospital for three days. And when I look back at the records, they already knew. They they knew that they, they were telling me, it looks like lymphoma, but we have to wait until the test results. But now that I look back on my records, the test results, it says, before I was even um, let go, it says mantle cell lymphoma. So, but we, we heard, we got the official diagnosis from my oncologist a few weeks later. And my wife was in tears, you know, and but then I just felt that, well, I have to be strong for everybody. So, and I knew it could go either way. So I just looked at the doctor and I said, okay, how are we gonna fight this? And he told me, he says, well, there's a 90, 95% chance of survivability and, and you should be fine. And so I told my wife, see, everything's fine. You know, and then we ended up in Texas because we just wanted a second opinion. I had mantle cell lymphoma and my wife's auntie, who is a pediatrician, happened to text my wife and said, go see this particular doctor at MD Anderson. I'm like, MD what? I've never heard of MD Anderson. So I found out they're the top cancer center in the nation and it's in Houston. And so we decided to go for a week, my wife and I, just to get a second opinion. And he said, you need to stay. Stay with me, give me a couple of months and I'll treat you. And so we decided to stay. And then I told my wife, go and get the kids, bring them over here. And then, then so two weeks, or I, I'm sorry, a week in Houston turned into four months. You know, we think, we think, it, you know, my, my, one of my sons went through real radical situation, surgery, and then chemo. And, um, you know, last week I had a little bit of nausea for a day. I don't know why. But I know mm -hmm. when you go through really radiation, I didn't experience that. I experienced other things, but it it knocks you out. You you know you're you're what you, some of the treatment is almost brings you to the point of death. You know, and he suffered, um, and and then and, and so many other things other than just nausea and extreme exhaustion, extreme lethargy, and in the middle of that, trying to continue to work. You know, and so we know there are people out there right now. We're gonna take a break in a moment that are facing this and we love you and and we're encouraging you and God's with you and I also want to give a word out to those those caregivers out there Maria Lanaquila Catholic Church it still stands the Eucharist is there in Lahaina you stand with the Lord and when all the destruction seems to be going on around you you stand and God will be standing with you we're gonna be right back with more we're speaking to Maria Lanaquila Church of course in Lahaina so we're going to be back with more. We talk. We're talking about more of uh, this battle, and the Lord's blessing in Eddie and his family's life. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure.
This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Wits. Rudyard Kipling wrote, If you can keep your wits about you while all others are losing theirs and blaming you, the world will be yours and everything in it. What's more, you'll be a man, my son. Kind of the opposite of being at one's wits end, which causes being scared out of one's wits. Then there's living by your wits, or not. As a lad, too often I didn't use my wits, like blindly following a friend intent on burglarizing a tavern. But all in all, life somehow left me with the kind of wits I was able to keep about myself when danger confronted. Like the time I was fighting my way across a massive windswept glacier lake in the Kitlope wilderness, with the teenage heiress of the Levi Strauss family in the back of my canoe. Hadn't been in a canoe for years. I vigorously paddled on like I was a veteran of canoeing in such storms. Or when a monster size of a man, a wife abuser from across our street, chased his bloodied wife into our home with knife in hand. Keep in mind, I'm five foot eight, in my cowboy boots at 190 pounds. Had to use my wits, given my comparatively limited brawn. Jesus is our leader in this business of wits. With clear-headedness, he faced down religious mobsters and trudged through blood, sweat, and tears, completing his main task at hand. That's why the writer of Hebrews exhorted us to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In doing so, you'll keep your wits about you in times of trouble. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Mama, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, 2016, we started filming Long Ride Home. And it's a daunting thing when you don't have the finances and you're, you're struggling uh, to do all this. Uh, the, 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 our riders, when we rode our motorcycles around the United States, they all volunteered to come. They paid their own way to come. Normally, a production like that is extremely expensive. I'm not saying it, isn't, it wasn't expensive to do, but the time involved in, in filming, in the pre-production, the actual filming of it, and then writing the show and editing, editing things down when you have about a half a terabyte of data every day when you're filming because we're using Go programmers and everything like that, and then parsing that down and finding the story that the Holy Spirit has there. I would say that doing that, uh, doing Long Ride Home, is the most challenging, most daunting thing I've ever done in my life. And my, and my sons, two of my sons worked with me on that project. And, we're, and we've won uh, tally awards for the show. So it means it's something that even the world, it's not just a Christian or a Catholic show. It's something that's, that's, that's received awards in the regular secular world too. Well, we want to announce that 11 new episodes have been released. Our fourth and final season of Long Ride Home has been, has been delivered to EWTN. It's airing on Friday nights. But you can go to deepadventure.com and become a mama bear or join the man cave, and you get access to all 33 episodes, the private, the secret YouTube links, 
that you can re- watch. You can share it with your friends. You can watch it there at home. And the new the new episodes of Long Ride Home should all be up on Prime Video. We have three seasons up on Prime Video now, but the the new season, uh, Prime Video takes their time, but we expect to have it up there in the next few couple of months. So uh, please go to uh, our website, deepadventure.com. Become a Man Cave member. Become a Mama Bear. And, uh, and you'll have access to all of that. And of course, all the other things our ministry has. Our, day, our, our, our guest today is Eddie Berenke. We're talking about turning adversity to adventure. And we've been, we're talking about how basically when everything just seems to be melting around you, you can go to Jesus. Uh, the church in Lahaina, Marina, Maria Lenakila Church, where my dad was a deacon, uh, when the fire devastated, everything around the church stood and the Eucharist remained and Mass continued to be was able to continue to be held there. Now, Eddie was going through this tremendous cancer battle, uh, but he stood with Jesus, and Jesus stood with him. So tell I us did. now, all of a sudden you're in Houston. You, you, go to the, you go to the emergency center thinking you're just going to check in for an hour. Then they say, right. no, you're going to the emergency room, so you think you're going to just be there for an hour. And then the emergency room says, no, you're being admitted. And then they say, you need to get, you, you know, for several days of tests. You find out you have a, a, a form of cancer that's very challenging and then you say well i'm going to go to houston and check it out then they check you into the hospital there in houston what was the type of cancer that that you you were battling it was called mantle cell lymphoma and i've heard of lymphoma and it it's a it's a non-hodgkin's lymphoma type of cancer but specifically it's called mantle cell lymphoma and the reason why we decided to, to go to Houston was because there was a doctor over there, and again, my auntie texted my wife, or my, my wife's auntie texted her and said, go see this doctor because he specializes in mantle cell lymphoma. Okay, think, so oh, what great. happened then? They tested you, and, and he said, we're going to treat you right here. Tell, me, tell us about that. They're, they're going to treat me here, and he went as, as far to, to say, he said, he said, you're not being treated aggressively enough, and he said, if you go home, Honolulu, if you go home, you'll be dead by next month. And I was like, okay. And I looked at my wife and said, I guess we're staying. You know, so and I that's when her, we started to hear about you. You were starting to share things on, on the right. social media. And we're like, oh, my gosh. Right. And I'm not big on social media, but, but I just felt because I was blessed. We were blessed with friends and family who donated to GoFundMe. And I just used Facebook as a way and Instagram as a way to, that was like my newsletter to let everybody know, this is where your money's going to, you know, and this is legit, and, and this is where we're at today. Here's yeah. my progress. And, uh, and yeah. your, your words were hope, but you looked, you look, you didn't look too good, man. So tell I, it. I didn't look too good, and I looked frail, and my, my wife told me that, and I eventually Could, lost my hair, which I was fine with. But, you know, honestly, you were talking earlier about being lethargic and being being you know throwing up getting sick but i don't know if it was just my experience but i don't think i experienced your typical what you hear of, of chemotherapy treatment cancer treatment because i went to the gym and 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 sometimes i quote argued with the with the physician assistants and the doctors there because i said i'm fine i'm fine and then my wife tells me says eddie you're fine is not everybody else is fine because I've always worked out on a regular basis and taking care of myself, and so okay. That's now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. That's a lesson. Out. That's a lesson right there. Um, there's going to come times in our lives when we're going to face real adversity, physical adversity, and, and and thank God for the people that are in good physical shape when the battle comes. You know, because you're. I know for me, I felt like I got chopped down, but um, but oh, yeah. I uh, but because of my physical fitness going into that. I, I was mm-hmm. able. I was able to weather the storm. I want to ask you a question. This is a. I hope you can explain this well, uh, because non-Catholics tend not to understand this. Catholics, you'll hear them say, "Oh, I'm 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 going through this 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 trial, but I'm offering it up." It, there's this mystery. I'm going to just give you a couple of scripture verses. There's this mystery, in which because we're part of the body of Christ, we're members of His body, that we actually join Jesus on the cross in his suffering. Um, mm-hmm. I think Catholics understand this because we understand the cosmic nature of the Eucharist, that it is indeed uh, that we're really present with Jesus on Golgotha uh, when, uh, when we celebrate the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. But we believe that, in, 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 that we are part, 
in some mysterious way we are part we are members of the body of we're members of his body that's actually the scripture and so mm -hmm. that when we suffer we actually can join our suffering to jesus with jesus on the cross and it becomes a powerful intercessory prayer it becomes a a redemptive prayer too because Paul even said, I, 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 talk, talking about his suffering, I will make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Now that seems like a heresy until you understand the mystery of it, that we are part of, we are joined with Jesus. And as we suffer, our suffering can be an intercessory prayer and also it can be a prayer of redemption. It, it, bring, it releases God's grace in every way, His superabundant grace. We participate in that release of God's grace. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you, practically speaking, tell me about that part of your experience of offering. Uh, uh, help us to ex understand it and to uh, what you went through and also explain it to us. Well, there is one thing that, that Jesus actually said, too, is He said, you know, if you wish to follow me, you must take up your own cross. Mm. And by taking up your own cross, that's the suffering. And and even just in more recent history, you had, if you recall, the the visitation of the Virgin Mary to the children at Fatima. She asked, are you willing to, to accept the suffering that God wills to send upon you for the for the conversion of sinners, for the reparation for sins? And these were just kids, and they said, Yes, why you know basically why wouldn't we? And so I think that was a good example. Mm. I'm thinking well, if the children of Fatima could do that, I as an adult can can easily do that. And so my thinking wow. was, wow. if I could, if I can do the same thing for the for the the reparation for sin, the conversion of sinners, I can save souls. So why not? And I was actually offering myself up to save souls. And so my, I had a simple prayer, and, and whenever I felt like I was going into a procedure or a test I was a little uncomfortable about, simple prayer would be the Divine Mercy prayer. I would say, Jesus, I trust in you, and then I'd follow up with, I offer up all of my sufferings for the conversion of sinners, for the reparation for sins, and then I added, and for the holy souls of purgatory. And that was my very simple prayer throughout the entire process. And I can, continue can, to can pray. You pray can you pray us to hold the Divine Mercy chaplet? Can you do it by heart? Because I can't. Can you? That just, you just know, the it's funny. Yeah, the, so yeah, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. We pray that every morning, and my wife and I. And when we were we had, we, were, we were talking about uh, Lahaina a couple of weeks ago, we were my wife and I went with this group to Lahaina. We spent a day over there, mm. connecting with people over there. And then while we were passing the the destruction, the driver said, "Can we pray a Divine Mercy?" Sure. And then one of the pastors looked back at me and says. Eddie, you lead it, and well, and I know the Divine Mercy Chaplet. There's some parts that I like. Oh, and my wife helps me, but well, do your but, best right now because before we take a break, just pray, pray that just before we um, go. Do you want me to pray the the oh um, that Jesus, I trust in you, or um, uh, 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 Eternal Father? Um, yes. Yeah, eternal policy, and, and it's, it's escaping me right now. <laughs> that's okay. That, that that's good. That's because you're only human. Right. It's so funny how so many of the Catholic prayers. I'm. I. It's. It's amazing. I mean that I. I don't have them memorized. I. I I'll, you but know, I just uh, prayed it just a little <laughs> while ago. And it's just I, like, I, I, when yeah. I. When I'm out. When I every day I, and I go out and I do my hour swim, and I'm praying. The prayers will just come to me. You know. But then I'm right. in a, a situation like this. I'm like, uh, uh, mm, uh. we're talking with Ed, Ed, Eddie Branke. We're going to talk more about uh, the victory, uh, his, his uh, turning adversity into adventure uh, with, his, with his battle with cancer uh, the summer he had in Houston. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. 
Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody, go to the YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. We're going to start doing so many new things on that YouTube channel. You've already got all of the Ocean Sunrise Catechisms where I spent a couple, two and a half years teaching through the whole catechism while I was down, usually down at the beach. We've got all, the long, we've got all of our, uh, the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows. I think we have several, we have maybe 400 radio shows, the video version of our radio shows up there. Cindy and I are going to begin, we're go, leaving in about a month to go to Montana, and then we're going to the Virgin Islands where we have our boat, the Spirit of Adventure. We're going to be sailing in the Virgin Islands, and we're going to be, by the way, we're, we're not sure yet, we're pondering how we may bring couples to come out there on a retreat with our boat, and uh, we'll have men's ministry out there, maybe uh, have a couple other boats with us, and we'll do men's ministry out there. But when we're out there, we're going to start doing some Adventures in Paradise uh, videos too, uh, just encouraging husbands and wives and encourage you in the Lord. So go to Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel and subscribe. It really helps us when you do that and share the videos with others. We have as our guest today uh, Eddie Berenke, uh, a, a man that's really well known here in the in the Catholic community. Uh, people just love him, and he's been so involved in in, in serving and, and in developing men's leader in, in men's leadership. By the way, Eddie, I get to come to the men's. I, there's a men's event I think next week, and I'm going to be speaking at October it. the seventh. I yeah. think October the seventh. Can you help me out there a little bit with my books and stuff? Sure. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, we're gonna bring a lot of long ride home T-shirts and coffee cups. We got so much stuff, sure, and then my, I would bring, I'll be bringing my my books too. So that'd be really cool. It's so cool because you know I go speak all over the country, you know, and uh, but here in Hawaii, I honestly I gotta just say I kind of hide out. But uh, but it's it's really an honor to get to come and be uh, to be part of uh, the men's the men, the great work that is going on here in Hawaii with the men. So now so now you're 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 um. You're um, going through the battle. You're offering this up in this beautiful way, this mystery that we won't quite understand. And tell us what's going on. How is your wife doing? How are your kids it's doing? It's interesting. It's because she was saying, how could you, how can you be so strong throughout this whole thing? And I told her, I already, if, if I'm placing all my faith in God, if I break down or anything, or if I, if there's just a time where I feel like, unfaithful, then all that faith goes out the window. So I said, I can't waver from, I, I have to, imua. Imua. I, I can't. Uh, strength I can't moving right. forward. The Hawaiian right, word, strength right. moving forward. Yeah. Because it, all the faith goes out the window if you have any doubt, if you have a sliver of doubt. And, and I didn't, and I knew that it could go either way. I felt I was going to be fine, but I knew that it could go either way because, because I'm there getting treatment for four months and I had four rounds of chemotherapy and each round I had to be admitted to the hospital for a week, you know, and then every week I was getting poking, uh, poked and prodded and they were taking blood 
twice a week for four months. That's well, you, you know, know it's like, it, it, Eddie. It's like this, you know. In the, I love the the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, I'm so proud right. I can say it. I know their words. You know, but when they were being thrown into the fiery furnace, they had these words. Uh, whether God God can deliver us from this fiery furnace, but whether He delivers it or not, it does not matter. I will serve the Lord, and that's what you did, Imua. Uh, that's the word for fortitude, for courage, for moving forward. You, you just kind of just kept moving forward. And then Lord. I had, you know, I told you that the you, divine mercy prayer, Jesus, I trust in you, that, that I pray that often. But I did pray another prayer, and it wasn't, take this away from me. I was asking God to get me through it. So I was asking for Amen. strength to get through it. So I wasn't asking him to take it away from me. I asked him to help me get through it. But do you remember what happened with those three young men? It's so so astounding. I, I remember, and I think about that, and I, as a human being, I think, would I be able to do that? Yeah, you could, that because at the, at, the, at the moment that you face adversity, God gives you the ticket of grace. That's why back in the day when people would go out of their way to try to become martyrs, and they said that those people that did that, died the most horrible deaths in anguish but those who yeah. were 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 led there by the holy spirit when when it was when it was when it wasn't them bringing it on themselves god gives them that grace that special ticket and what's so cool is that when they came in how are those guys are those guys guys burned to death yet no the guy opens up the furnace door and he gets the guy who opens it gets killed but he goes i i the other one says i see there's four men in there now there's the three men, and then there's the fourth one. That's Jesus in there with us. And when the men came yeah. out, uh, they said they didn't even have the smell of smoke. And that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. There was a saint, right? And I, I heard that he was yeah. like uh, getting Deacon Lawrence alive, and he said, "I'm not done yet." He goes, yeah. "You can just turn me over. I'm not," or something like that. I'm I love that. Yeah, he, they're burning him on the grate, <laughs> and he goes, "You can turn me over. I'm not done yet." That's the grace of the Holy Spirit. There's this beautiful scripture in Song of Solomon, where it's a picture of the of the of the the love the the the, the beloved uh, coming out of the desert on the on the couch of Solomon on the bed of Solomon. Now, you know, they used to carry them on those beds as their the royalty, you know. And it says, "Who is this coming out of the desert?" clouds of smoke and you see uh as we go through that desert experience there's a burning away so here's his beloved she's beautiful and there's in the in the back it's not dust clouds it's clouds of smoke behind her so there's a great burning away god has this way of burning away the dross in our life through adversity and you know the way a, a, a refiner knows if the gold is purified is he keeps skimming it off and skimming off until what? Till he can look in the gold and see his reflection. And so as we go through adversity and we go through an adventure, uh, we come out refined. And what I loved about it is, is the men that are carrying her, um, uh, the, carrying the, bride, the beloved, and that's who we are as Christians, as we're God, Christ's beloved. Every one of them, it says, was expert with the sword. You know, that's what you were. You stood on God's word and you prayed that prayer. Come hell or high water, Lord, whether I live or whether I die, I will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And then I don't know if you if you meant physically an actual sword, but but as you know, one of the things that we have in common, we're both not only do we both live in Waikiki, but we're both martial artists. Right? We're a screamer, you know, a screamer, the, the right? Dick, yeah. The Filipino and, martial art, yeah. Right. Tell them about the. Right. Tell them about that first men's conference we had. Oh yeah. So we thought we'd mix it up because you know usually when you have conferences you you have guys talk and then and everybody's seated the men are seated listening to to uh, to you talk, but then uh, what Bear and I did was we said okay we're going to give a little demonstration we're going to get the men up and I brought enough sticks for all the guys. And so Bear and I, we did a little demonstration. We said, okay, do what we do. And so we, we so they're able to move, get the blood flowing, and, and feel like a man because I got a weapon in my hand. Yeah, you know. And so and Bear and I are doing this. We're doing this drill, and we get the guys to do the drill as well. And they really enjoyed it. I haven't done it since that day. I used to be a, an Eskrima instructor along with other martial arts things. But but Eskrima is basically do gnarly Filipino martial arts. Very, yeah, very six, combative. Nine, hand. Yeah, because oh, yeah. it's it, the very same deadly, the same things you do with a about an eighteen inch or twenty four inch long 
bamboo stick that's been kind of burnt so it's hard right. the same things you do with that stick you do with the knife you do empty-handed and it's pretty gnarly right. it was actually i think it was a filipino escrima uh person who ended up ended magellan's life i think that's how the story goes right right and so it's pretty gnarly on the island of Cebu, and, and so a fry thing side note my family's from Cebu. My father's side from Cebu. My wife's from Cebu. So I kind of say, "Oh yeah, yeah, we we're we're uh, we're descendants of great Escrima fighters." And I don't know that. Hey, but. you want to bring some sticks to the to the October seventh thing? I don't. I we haven't could. trained it. I have not trained in it since then. Maybe you can. I train almost every morning, at least just to oh. stay loose, and you know because oh, that's so cool. I'm getting up there in age. It gets your. Your hand, it works on your hand-eye coordination. I th think in terms of self-defense, gets the blood flowing, and it's a good toning exercise. It's sure, so sure, I can bring some maybe sticks. maybe bring some sticks, but we'll get someone else besides me to to train with you. Yeah. Uh, be, I mean, I would love to. My good friend, a biker Don from California, he's an escrima aficionado too. He's a biker. He's a surfer. He says, "Come on, let's let's do some escrima." And I got how many sticks anymore? I used to always keep them right next to my bed. You know, wherever I was, you know, yeah. in, in case there was a home invasion. I also, right. always, yeah, and I also always have my, it's interesting, I always have my, my black belt hangs at the entrance to my house, and my rosary oh, yeah. hangs over my black belt, which is a way of go. saying someone, you come in the house, expect to be dealt with, you're not going to just have it easy if you come in here. We got sidetracked into our macho kind of area of our life, but speaking <laughs> of which, in my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Eddie, I talk about how every man needs to be dangerous. Uh, we need to be able to fight uh, the spiritual fight, but also be able I to agree. protect and protect our family. But now, so that do you think that training in a screma uh, not, got you physically fit, but also there's a mental fitness that you had when you went in to fight cancer? There is, there is, and and partly, like I was saying, the spiritual aspect, knowing that you know what, whether it goes this way or goes this way, God's got me. I'll be fine, and I had to convince my wife of that. But just mentally, I think from working out, because working out, you have a particular goal. I, I, I want to get bigger arms. I want to get a bigger chest. I, I want to be more healthy. I want to look this particular way. And then you, you stick to the goal. You have the vision in mind. And so I already knew mentally I could see myself healthy already. Mm -hmm. So I just had to, to hold on to that vision. And although I didn't have any hair and my wife said, yes, you look frail, I would go to the gym. I would still go to the gym on a regular basis. And there was times where I told you earlier, I would kind of argue with, with the, the staff, the, the doctors and the, the physician assistants because they would say, your well, hemoglobin is low. You need to get a uh, transfusion. I said, I was just at the but gym they, but, here, but here's what happens. So this is what here's happened so much with people is they go to the doctor because there's something wrong and the doctor prescribes a medicine, but really the real medicine is, is get out there and exercise. And, and part of it I, anyway I, I agree. is to get, is, to, is you, there's a lot of it you can do just by staying fit. But you know, like I got to interview Boss Rutten, the great martial artist, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. UFC He's fighter. Awesome. And you know, he, I like what you said. There's a real discipline. You say, every morning I do this. Uh, with my screaming every night I pray the rosary I do this in the mornings I go to mass so you have a disciplined life boss root and every morning he gets up he goes out by the pool while he's doing his flexibility training he's praying the rosary we got to go Eddie I'll see you in oh. a week at the men's event Eddie Barranca is, okay. is, is our guest Eddie how can people find you can they do you have an email they can reach out to you or on your Facebook page uh, sure, sure, on my Facebook page, but uh, I have a business, so it's, it's called T by You, so Eddie at T by You dot com. How do you spell that? T what? Find me. T? T, T E E dash B Y dash Y O U dot com. Say Eddie it again. At, Say it again. Eddie at T E E dash B Y dash Y O U dot com. That's cool because you do custom, custom t shirts. Okay, we're talking right. with Eddie Barenke. We'll be uh, back next week with. Uh, Another episode of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until then, will you do the aloha with me? We're, Eddie, do it with me, okay? May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. 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 Amen. Ha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.